Anyone out there ready for some wrestling? Some Final Fantasy? Pro wrestling? Could be a big night. I did try to get Ric Flair out of retirement one last time for tonight's FFPW show, but he declined my very generous offer of zero dollars. So instead, yes, Sid will be in action tonight. Take a look at our card in just a moment. Almost ready to start. As a Yankees fan, I can't find fault with what you're say saying there, Elvin, so you can definitely say that as much as you'd like. If I recall correctly, you're a Mariners fan, and I think our teams are playing. I saw it was 2 nothing for the bad guys when I last checked in. I haven't seen the scores in a while. But enough about fake baseball. It's time for real Final Fantasy Pro Wrestling. I think we have a night of interesting matchups. Some pairings that perhaps you haven't seen before. We will, of course, have an Evil Wall Challenge. There will be a Rumble to end the evening. So we'll take a look at that card. 
coming up. Grab a seat, grab a snack. Final Fantasy Pro Wrestling comes your way starting now. That's right, it's another night of Final Fantasy Pro Wrestling. I am Korgs, you're here at my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have such a fun time watching these Final Fantasy Pro Wrestling matches, and here are the matches that we have coming up tonight. You can see we're going to start it off with a 4v4 elimination match, a little twist on one that we had a, a week or so ago, where Kane, uh, I'm sorry, where DKC subbed in for Rubicante. That was probably the night of Rubicante versus Valvalo, so now that I'm saying that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But in any event, uh, Kane has convinced DKC. We've seen them square off against each other. We've seen them team up together. And Kane has convinced DKC to side with himself, Sid, and Tella as a four-person team to take on those powerful elements, all four of them, uh, in the ring. Mylon Z, Barbaricha, otherwise known as Valvalis. The Turtle, Kainazzo, and the champ himself, Rubicante. Uh, and that will be an elimination tag match, and that's going to start us off in just a moment. Then we have uh, Balnab, again, testing himself further. We saw him defeat Kainazzo during the last show after uh, mangling the dwarves for a couple shows. So Yang has been watching. Yang's been watching what Balnab does. Balnab has a number of strong strikes, and Yang says he's the man to finally take down Balnab. Balnab is undefeated currently in the FFPW, so we see if Yang can go toe-to-toe, fist-to-fist -to -toe, fist with the giant creation of Dr. Luge tonight. Then we will have the Evil Wall Challenge. This uh, Someone might be pulling double duty tonight. Someone, a long-time member of the FFPW Federation, has not yet faced the Evil Wall. So someone might get a match or two off and then get thrown right back into it uh, versus the evil wall tonight so we'll see how that goes and then we'll see how Rydia and Mindy are doing they've had this um, almost a mentorship relationship that that Rydia the veteran has been showing towards Mindy uh, Mindy occasionally mentions her sisters but they haven't shown up and and most people think she's all talk and she, Mindy requested this match she wants to show Rydia all she's learned and have a nice competitive match she's been watching the matches that uh, say Young and Tella had and 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 Sid and Kane and, and various matches lately where yeah, two buddies face off in the spirit of competition and Mindy wants that for herself. Riddy, of course, is uh, thinking of future tag tournaments, tag opportunities. Maybe she's found herself her, her partner for the long term. So they're going to have a, a match. Uh, and then we're going to end our night with a Royal Rumble. And you're going to be able to wager a little twist on the wagering tonight. You're simply going to wager on which slot you think is going to win. Uh, slots one and two, the two slots that start off, or that coveted eighth position, the wrestler coming in fresh while the other uh, competitors have been in the ring for you know over 15 minutes at that point. So you're not going to know who's in the Rumble. You're simply going to wager when we get to the end of the night on which slot you think is going to win. So we'll get there eventually, but we're going to start right now with our 4v4 elimination tag match. Give me one moment. I'll get that match started for you. And here we go. Be right back. All right, let's get this one going. So here they are. One of these things is not like the other. Kane, Sid, and Tella have been involved in various tag and multiple person matches together. But they've uh, came with the help of Kane, they've enlisted DKC to help them out against the elements tonight. We'll see how this goes. Four of them in the ring, but there is another four about to enter. Here they come, let out. 
by their leader and the champion, the heavyweight champion, holder of the gauntlet title, Rubicante, leads out his squad of helmets. Barbaricia, Bob Alex, Kane Otso, the Turtle, and we've got the Vile, the Dastardly Milo. We, of course, we are once again live from the Chocobo Bar to Chocobo Ring with our yellow Chocobo referee. We will pause this in a moment and allow you to make your wagers. Let's see who we got here tonight. So we have two choices. The team of Kane, Pella, Sid, and DKC, or those darn elements. The arch fiends, if you will. If, if you're here and you've got waves and you'd like to wager them, now is your chance. Go for it. Hello, welcome, Belthazar and Harumph. Great to see you here tonight. I should start allowing predictions for the Telebirds. Not quite there yet. <laughs> Four is not a bad number. Right now, about two to one wagering for the good guys, in quotes. DKC is in that mix. He's not necessarily been the goodest guy. Of course, he's the one who introduced the evil wall to this whole federation. How good could he be? But maybe Kane has had a good influence on him. Uh, one special stipulation for this match tonight. There is no outside count. There is a disqualification count. You're not allowed to pin in the ropes. However, once the action goes outside, I do not believe the yellow chocobo will be counting tonight. So here we go. We're starting this one up. I have to deal with here. Give me one moment. I'm sorry to pause the action on you. Give me one second here. One moment. We're going to go to our technical difficulty screen. I apologize. All right, we are back. Let me know if there's anything uh, wrong audio-wise. We are back. Hopefully everything's good. This match has started. And here we go. <laughs> We've got Mylon going for the early pin on Sid. Not even a one count. Slam Sid down. Sid in a, not a great spot there in that corner. And Mylon right now. Looking for a second to be able to do whatever he wanted to Sid, but Sid bowls him over on the rebound. And he decides to tag in DKC first, maybe putting the newcomer to this group to the test to see if he's really a part of kind of the lighter side, the better side. I don't know how you want to describe it. But he took Mylon down, tried to run at him, but Mylon popped back up. And nice duck of Mylon's... Uppercut, that clawed uppercut, you don't want to get hit by that. Going for the pin, might get a one count, there it is. And here comes the turtle, and it's a double team attempt, DKC avoids it. Uh, his timing looks off there, Mr. Kanon, so you got to work on that, he's got to work on that, he's got to work on climbing the ropes. A number of different areas of self-improvement for the turtle. <laughs> Welcome, Jay Brown. We'll have plenty of op other opportunities. You can, of course, put in a, a fake bet as DKC gets a double team power bomb. Who would who would your uh, waves have been on, Jay Brown? Champ is now in the ring. Luka Conte, heavyweight champ, gauntlet title belt holder, and there's Tella. 
hella wrenching. That's got to be trying to send a message. Immediately going for the leg of the one affectionately known as Leg. You see that big leg just get ripped away from his torso. Tellen King. Maybe it takes two of them to power bomb down the gigantic element of fire. Nice top rope maneuver there by that. That was our moon stop move, and Kane now wrapping up the leg and ankle through contact. They are kind of keeping on theme here. Sid approves. If you're just tuning in, this is an elimination 4v4. Pretty typical rules, and here are all four of this group in. I thought they might go for a four-on-one maneuver, but they hop back out. And Kane showing off some strength. Throwing Rubicante across the Chocobo ring. Uh, we just saw Mist come out. Not sure if you saw that. If you've been watching, you know that Mist has been banned as a wrestling move. However, the commissioner, as an allowance, has, has permitted Mylon to use it as a taunt. Looks like Sid and Valvalis are legal wrestlers at the moment. Test of strength. Who's stronger? Ooh, Val powers oh Sid down and gets a strike in. You can hear the crowd in the background Ugaing along with Sid. DKC starts the lecture about justice. And there they are again, all four of them. Val powers through Kane and side slams Tella down. Kane to the top, attempting to get the goon stomp again. He lands it. He's going for back to back. He is. We go for three. Probably wisely cho choosing not to go for the trifecta. Goes for the pin. None of his teammates are coming out to help. Gets a 2.9 count. And misses. I think he's going for his leg lock there. That might have been our first elimination. You can see Val Valis was exhausted there on the outside of the ring. Big turtle elbow. Wins it and he's going to the top. He cannot make it. That was terrifying for a moment for Kane. Swinging neck breaker. <sighs> Kane's had enough. In comes Tella again. Big turtle running. Lucky for Kanazo, links the arms behind the ropes to arrest his motion as Tella knee drops the shell. Guess nothing's made Tella angry enough yet to display the bird. Or maybe, I wonder if Tella will be bashful in considering the referee is a bird and he's on a bird ring. I don't know if any of that works into his, his thoughts here. But anyway, uh, Sid's taking kind of a few hits here. Luckily gets up before Mylon can run and deliver whatever move he had intended. Sid landing a series of strikes followed by a nice little shoulder tackle. Setting Mylon down and now going for the pin in the enemy corner. This is just a an in-your-face moment here. I don't think Sid had any thought he might win at that moment or eliminate Mylon, but sending a message to the elements. And he's doing it again. Feel the power. Telling the elements to feel his power. <laughs> Not even a half count. And the pile driver trying to force the turtle head back into the shell. Not successful, but definitely damage done to the turtle. Group contact calling for the tag. He can see Kainato needs some help. Kainato does manage to drop a big fist, but has no intention of tagging out. Nice. I like that block by Sid with the gloves. Couldn't block that elbow when Sid goes down. The DKC is now the legal wrestler on this side, and he's going for the Justice Lock. Could this be our first elimination? That's DKC's finisher. Sid did all right, and he made the right call to tag out when he did. That is true, the elements are, are making these half gestures out whenever one of their own is in trouble. Let's see if that continues. Nice coordination between DKC and Kane. Uh, unfortunately now, DKC's face is getting coordinated with Mylon's teeth. 
Fast count. Yellow Chocobo known. Despises any kind of rough stuff, illegal activity. Will not give you much time at all. But in this match, and it hasn't happened yet, if there is outside the ring action, there will be no count out tonight. Now that I say that, here we go. All four of our good guys out, and it looks like all eight are going to be out on the same side of the ring right now. We have a lot of action right up against the fans. It is going to be hard to keep track of. We got, we got three of them pounding down the back of the champ with the Conte. Barbariccia grabbing the board. Stomping is happening. Elbow drops, double teams broken up. Kane gets sent running by Rupert Conte. Low blow on DKC. Sid's getting his face bitten off. Turtles are standing there, just happy to watch him. Low blow delivered to DKC. Big backdrop on Tella on the padding. The very, very thin padding in the There is no counter. Barbara Reach has had enough, but she can't stay out for long. She hopped right back in. We have a light tube out. DKC has the lightsaber. Not normally a weapon he can equip, so he's dropped it. Vertical suplex delivered to the turtle by Tella. The turtle's back in the ring. Sid's back in the ring. And now they're grappling in the ring. Sid is delivering his delayed brain buster in the ring. There's a double team maneuver happening outside. Barbara Reacher taken, taken down by an Enterprise Bomb on the turtle. Not a true pin attempt. There's now a count going on because Mylon had a weapon in the ring. Looks like we are returning to in the ring action. Rubicante taking the long way home. He has always been a super tramp. As Barbariccia goes down to a single punch from Kainato. And I think Kane just escaped from Barbariccia's finisher. She escaped. He escaped entering her spin, which is kind of fitting when you think about it. And now we have a pin attempt. This could be it if it's not broken up. So that's one. We are now in a four-on-three situation. Barbara Riccia has been eliminated. And I also believe that if the action goes outside the ring again, she will not be a part of it. I think we're going to see that right now. You can see she has taken a knee. If you're a fan of the elements, this is bad news. One of their best has been taken out. And we have a double team neckbreaker backdrop on Scar Miglione. Conte going for a roll-up pin. Not, not, not the legal wrestling. It's not going to happen right now. Kane with the Dragoon jump. Up the body and another one on the turtle. He could just land one of those when he's the legal wrestler. He might get another elimination, but now Kane has gone down the hook route. Big move landed on Kane by Ruben Conte. Tella stalking Kainatsu from behind Kainatsu. Then Rubicante has just looped into nothing. Rubicante ran full speed, left out of the ring. There was no one there. <laughs> Mylon is just spinning at the hands of Sid. And Sid pays for it with a powerbomb. Sid taking damage out there. I don't know who's legal at this point. A big spinning Lyra on the champ by Sid. Action returning to the ring. Sid does a jig. Sid loved that last sequence. DKC with the walkout brain buster on my lawn. And DKC, I think, landed on that claw. Someone brought a claw in the ring. DKC took some damage there. But he does it again. And he might go for it. I think he's going to go for an elimination here. But Mylon gets up. Yeah, I think this has been a pretty good match. DKC with the back-to-back -back kind of headlock suplexes. Chopping down the champ. Oh, and he's got Ruby in the arm drags. That's one, that's two, and that's three arm drags, and Ruby falls out of the ring. Here we go again. Uh, but Ruby hops back in, followed by DKC. Ruby now landing the hook round on DKC. When DKC goes down the hook wrap, you know it's been rough. Going for the pin, broken up by Tella. Yeah, Cecil tagging in Kane, who convinced him to join this team for tonight. We'll see if it lasts beyond tonight. Falling 
Larry on King. I think the turtle's coming in. King dismisses Ruby to the far corner. Lands a vertical suplex on the turtle, going to the top. Landing double foot stomp on, directly on the meat of the shell. Shells have meat and pays for it. That did not hurt Kenato at all. Kenato just suplexes him out of the ring. Big straight punch lands on pain by Ruby Ponte. I'm hoping some, someone's got to help. I'm sure there's a three on one in the ring right now, but there's a two on one going on outside the ring. Uneven matchup here right now. Kenato's in trouble and Kane's in trouble. Kane, Kane may be rescuing himself at this point. Throwing Mylon into the barrier. Looks like Barbaricha is trying to get involved. I don't know what she's permitted to do. She's just, okay, <laughs> she came up and kicked Kane. So never mind. She is involved. And if you missed the bird, I did too. I guess a rump spotted it. <laughs> we have a double team. Neck drop, uh, neck breaker backdrop outside on Kane. Yeah, Kane, Kane's in bad spot. BKC saving Tella from the devastating suplexes of, <laughs> of the turtle and then gets repaid as Sid saves him. Amazing, uh, amazing sequence there. And <laughs> I, I caught that bird. As the camera panned out, Tella told all of the elements exactly how he feels. Increment your count. Go. 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 Striking contest. Go. The lecture. You're not the real champ. I mean, Rubicante is the real champ. Oh, can kill that one. Belly to belly takedown. Yeah. Sid doing the jig. And this looks like we have a CSW. That is Tella's finisher. Follows it up with the bird. Does not go for the pin. Wants to bring Sid in. I caught one that you guys didn't. If, 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 if that one after the CSW was your two, you gotta be at least on three. Yeah, I guess I guess when you land your finisher, you have a chance. You can flip off your opponent or you can go for the pin. Both good options. Gut wrench, suplex on the champ. And the big knee as Sid holds Ruben Conte's arms apart. And there it is, the Uga Crush, crowd favorite. And Sid's on the run. Rubicante gets up, gets up dizzy. I think you have to go for the elimination on the champ now. You do not want him to last long as he kind of runs through the taunting mist of his teammate Milan. And that's, yep, that's exactly what happened. If you don't go for that pin, now Rubicante's got the tag. He exits the ring. Another Uga crush. Allows Tella the opportunity to grapple into Mylon. But Mylon's now on the run. Delivers a clawed foot stomp to the exposed chest. The exposed chisel chest, I might add, of the Sage from Asidia. And the uppercut to the back of the head takes Tella down. And then a swift left leg kick. Tella's gonna have a bruised calf at that. I'd be concerned right now, and you can see Tell's been broken open. Blood coming from his head. He gets ripped down by his gray hair. Okay. Tella is taking a beating from Mylon right now. Tella needs to make a tag. I think he's going to be able to after taking my immediately goes for Sid. And I agree with, uh, with Elvin here. Kane, I think, is probably the freshest. I haven't seen Kane in action lately. He keeps kind of cycling between Sid and Tella. And this could be bad. That's the fall flat maneuver. Mylon's going for a pin. I don't think he's going to be able to get it as Kane is there to break it up. But that was dangerous territory for Sid. Sid now running at the back of the dizzy Mylon. Mylon wakes up just in time to take the lariat from Sid. Sid on the run again at the prone Mylon. Lands with the full force of his upper body. But the turtle comes in and there's a double team landing on Sid right now. That's a good point, Belvazar. Kane was very involved when, uh, when the Mayhem was happening. Uga crush on the turtle head. 
<laughs> just saying hi to Ruby as he springs in and lands on the turtle. Bold. Sid has been bold in that corner tonight. The feel the power pin attempts <laughs> just standing next to Ruby and springboarding over him onto Peinazzo. And Peinazzo did not like that. Power bombs him down and is sitting on. This could be an elimination. 2.9. 2.9 Sid says that's enough for now. DKC's got the turtle running. Always a good strategy. Turtle does not have stamina. Oh, I didn't notice Sid fell on something. In case you didn't uh, <laughs> Val eliminated probably about 10 minutes ago at least by this point, screaming. And the turtle tags in the chat and DKC escapes the double team attack. This could be bad for DKC as he gets power bombed down. Ruby is going for the pin. He's the champ. He goes for finishes. And that is an elimination right there. Confused why both teams are hesitating as they're uh, trying to rescue? Are, 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 are they seeing that it's it's over? But we are now even 3-3. Three, three. With both DKC and Valvalis having been already eliminated. And it looks like we have a choke slam on the engineer. Is this going to be a back-to-back -back elimination for Rubiconte? It is indeed the champ showing why he's the champ. Rubiconte has single-handedly turned the tables on this match. Let's see what Tella has to say about it. Tella says, stop eliminating my teammates, and chops him down, but Ruby says, no, you might be next. Tella tries to land the hook on Ruby, but Ruby makes the tag to Mylon Z, and this could be super bad. This could be the time of the match where Mylon Z decides to dig his claws into your stomach. Uh, or kick you below the belt. See the big reach flying halfway across the ring. That top rope maneuver onto the body of Tella. Oh! Tella responds with a quick flurry of punches. Tags in Kane. It's been a while since Kane's been officially involved in the action. Tella takes another low blow. Kane's shown, he, he's used his Dragoon Jump twice, albeit when he was not a legal wrestler. He could use it now, but instead he gets, gets Mylon's finisher. The deep ravine and the pin attempt can tell break it up. He cannot. This was four on three for the good guys. It's now three on one with Tella, the last one standing. Mylon measuring Tella, waiting for him to get up. The top rope jumping cutter into sight on the already broken open face of Tella. Insult to injury, or really injury to injury. However, this is the Soma drop. Big maneuver there by Tella. He's got to get to his corner and try to get a pin on or something, but Mylon reverses that. Val thinks her team is on its way to victory at this point. It'd be hard to argue with this. Tell going for a pin, but he is in the ropes. One of the rules being enforced tonight. Val is interfering right now. The yellow chocobo is being distracted by Val Val. She's trying to get in the ring. Yellow chocobo says no. The action is right in front of him. Tell is getting choke slammed right in front of this confrontation. Ruby is running. He signaled he's going to drop the leg. He drops the leg. This could be it right here. If that punch had landed, that would have been over, but this choke slam, I think, is going to do just fine for the elements. If you win, oh, but he does not go for the pin. Making a statement. The miss comes out. Pella, <laughs> like going back in his corner for a tag, instead, he finds the hook route. Does anyone think this match is continuing after this? I do not, and it's over. Rubicante celebrating in the middle of the ring. Keinazzo is not done yet. Keinazzo sending Tello running. Tosses him back down. And it's the wave! Keinazzo gathering the water right as the match ends. 
as we cut away. Right now, you can't see it, but Tella is getting waved after the match. Oh, oh no. <laughs> that's, inc that's incredible. <laughs> All right, time to pay off the 51% that did go with the winners, the elements. Congratulations. <laughs> Poor Tella. Didn't that didn't that happen last time? The last time we had one of these four v four eliminations, didn't <laughs> wasn't tell all the last one standing then too. I mean, there are too many children watching Belthazar. No one wanted to see <laughs> the defeated hook routed Tella get waved. I mean, I kind of wanted to see it, but I don't always make those calls. All right, let's go back. See what else we have coming up. That one was fun. <laughs> All right, we're going to go from the somewhat chaotic 4v4 elimination match to something that should be less chaotic, but no less power pack, as two very strong competitors are about to go at it one on one. Let me just consult with our head referee tonight, make sure that all of our match rules have been adjusted. What do you mean, does Yang have Thunderclaw? Like, does he own one? They are 5k. We don't pay much here in the FFPW. Or do you mean, does he have a, mo a move that he calls a Thunderclaw? In which case, the answer would be no, and maybe we have some possibilities there. All right, let's get this one set up. <laughs> now I see. Now I see. I've been doing very poorly in, in all of the, uh, the free enterprise races and async, so <laughs> you can see that reference right, right over my head. But we've got Jan coming up. We've got Balnab. Balnab wants another challenge. I mean... Is it Lugay that really wants to challenge folks with his creation of Balnob? I don't know what really is going on in Balnob's head. But yes, two big punchers coming up. Think about who you'd like to wager on, but let's get this one going. Here we go. Hello, Commander. Welcome. Good to see you here tonight. <laughs> what a great emote. Oh, that's tr that's tremendous. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that one. How appropriate. That is the name of Balnob's finisher. R-R-R-R. Maybe another R after that, I'm not sure. But there is Jan. Right at the bull. But he's got to deal with this massive mechanical creature led out by his creator, Dr. Luge. Balnob currently undefeated in the FFPW. A few of those matches were against Gorbs. Big win last week against Kainatsu. Let's we'll see if he can get another meaningful win here against Young. So who's going to win this one? Is it going to be Young? Is it going to be Balnob? And yes, managers with his manager, Luge, in the corner. Time for you to wager. Wager your waves. This could simply be the question of who lands the most punches the soonest. That is both heavily featured in both of their repertoire. Balnob's finisher is a devastating maneuver where he just basically picks you up by your head and slams you back down. Once he weakens you enough with his punches, lots of waves going out on the Big Beast Balnob. So maybe Yang is your value bet here. If you'd like to make some waves back. Jave run firmly in the corner of the Beast. But let's get this one going as time ticks away. I don't think the match is going to end in the 
the next five seconds. Here we go. Fight! Punch landed by Bonham, chop and kick landed by Young. And the test of strength, who's stronger here? Young, winning the test of strength against Bonham. That could be a good sign for those of you who went with the monk from Kabul. Young got a block off. You want to block as much of this damage as you can. Bonob not getting bounced off the ropes. And back-to-back -back punches landed by both wrestlers. Kick to the midsection by Bonob. Not sure how effective those are going to be. And this could be it. Young going for the pin. That's a one. Those big over the... Oh. Those big... Those big windmill style punches taking a toll. Young goes down to a jab. They are trading blows. And now big knees landing on the head of the monk. Without with very little hair to protect them. And the choke. Yeah, that was some sequence. I'm going to talk to Castro now because he's on mute. That's me talking to Castro. He can't hear. What's Bonob got in mind here? It is a power bomb and the pin attempt. Is this going to be a less than four minute match? 2.9. Good, good for Young. Slow him down. Bring him up. Chop him down. Let his own weight damage him as he falls. I don't know how robust he is. But this is bad news for Young. Another power bomb. Bonob picks him back up. Big elbow to the back. His whole body now landing on Young. See, I knew I knew Castro would get that. <laughs> Look how well my communication works. Jan thinks he's won this striking contest, and he has. Nice step kick. Pounding the midsection. And the flurry, the bull flurry, specialty of Yang. Circling, looking for his opening. The big power punch to the midsection, not his finisher. Will we see that fist of the bull come out? Unfortunately for Yang, a third power bomb landed, and the pin attempt. Five minutes in, this is going to be tough, Yang. Do you have it in you? He does. Two count. Maybe Yang is getting a second win. Dr. Luge gesticulating on the outside. I thought this was over a couple minutes ago, but Yang has mounted quite the comeback, I think. Can he get it done? Yang to the top. Waiting for Valdov to regain his feet. And the big flying body attack into a pin. Is this it? 2.9. That's the closest so far. Valdov has come to being beaten in the FFPW. And this is actually a great strategy. Let the big creature run. Run right into your uppercut. Now you run at him. Palm strike him down. But once again, power move. Oh, kind of a sloppy power bomb there. Yang, this could be it for Yang right here. It is over. Wow. That one swung. All ball up at the beginning. Big comeback in the middle for Young, and I think if, if anywhere in that sequence, if he hits his finisher, that could have been it. He had to do that sooner rather than later. Unless you're good, it's it's tough to be in a war of attrition, as the lack of stamina Balnab has works in your favor. But you you also don't want to stand in there taking the the punches. Let's pay off these predictions. Seventy percent on Balnab. You are the winners. Balab undefeated, and again, now back-to-back -back weeks of beating beating top-tier wrestlers here. Kenatso and Yang, if not exactly the top, just under the top. Yeah, we're learning more and more about Balab. I, I, and until he loses and we kind of get that measuring stick of, of what it's going to take, I think it's, it's going to be a tricky bet. It's going to be a tricky bet to figure that out. All right, I have I have issues with my streamlabs tonight. I'm maneuvering. Let's see if I can fix it. There we go. It's a little better for me. Let's move our next arrow down. Hey, from one monster to another.
It is time for the Evil Wall Challenge tonight. Bomb Up has not yet met the Evil Wall. That That is kind of a cl uh, clash of the titans, a collision of two impossibly large individuals that we're going to hold off on for a little bit. However, tonight's Evil Wall Challenge is going to be someone that has been with the FFPW for quite a long time and has not yet gotten his shot at the wall, and tonight is the night for that shot. I will go set up that match. In the meantime, though, let's take a look at our Evil Wall Challenge leaderboard. So the one we did in our last show was Ipe Girl, EG, partner of Carrie, who is at the bottom. Carrie 303, the worst time ever, a couple shows ago, and there she is being perpetually crush phased by the Evil Wall as punishment. Her teammate tried last time and lasted a little better, still at the bottom of the, uh, near the bottom of the ranking at 502. And today again, uh, let me go set up our longtime fan favorite wrestler who's already wrestled tonight. And it's time for him to take on the wall. So remember, this is all about, sure, I guess someone could beat the wall, but you're really just going to be wagering on how long do you think they will last. And hopefully my little timings are set up from last time. I'm going to give you four choices. You can now look at the list. And I should tell you, well, I, I guess you'll see. But you could probably guess who this is going to be uh, from my description. But you'll you'll know who it is before you make your wager. So let me get. Let's get it going. Bob, we're good to go. Walking out, coming down the ramp for the second time tonight. It is Sid. Sid on the losing end of the four v four match just a few moments ago. But Sid has seen all of his friends and adversaries have their turn with the evil wall. And Sid's decided it's time for him to step up and see what he can do. How long can he last? Because he's got someone else coming up to face him. And here it comes. Again, not really a he. It's, it's an if. It's a wall. It's a rock. It's the evil wall. Keep the same timings as your choices for how long you think Sid's gonna last. Let's pause that. Uh, let's see, how long does Sid last against Evil Wall? You've got choices, you've got options. Wager those waves. Will Sid be near the bottom? Will Sid essentially, again, if, if, you, if you're wagering on, on the first option, zero to three minutes, you're saying Sid's going to have the worst time ever. So are you going to wager on that? Then you have your two middle ground choices, three minutes to six or six minutes to nine. And then finally, do you think Sid is going to challenge for the best time ever? As you saw on our board, over 13 minutes was Young. And right now, heavy, heavy betting on the upper end of this scale. All of the bets, six minutes or longer at this point. If you don't believe in Sid, potentially a good opportunity to make some waves. Lots of believers here. I'm going to let this one go to the end before I start this, because this match could just end. I mean, maybe it's Crush Phase already, and we don't know it. Maybe it's Crush Phase right now. Maybe the Evil Wall has made, his, made its way all the way across the screen. And you're out of life potions. Here we go. Fight! Can Sid avoid those early attacks? So far, no. Oh, uh, sorry, Tibble, you missed the bet. Unofficially, where would your bet have have been? And welcome and good evening to you, Tibble. Sid getting a little damage in. What's up, Cult Mother? Sid in the corner. Sid, get out of the corner, and he does. You don't want to be in that corner when the entire wall is running at you. Speaking of running at you, here it comes, and Sid ducks the big chop. Will he duck another one? Oh, just a collision. Not bad. Could have been worse. <laughs> Tybalt would have been less than three. All right. Well, we're about halfway there. <laughs> no faith in Sid. 
I mean, right? to be fair, no one's ever lasted less than three, so that, that would be a kind of a unique bet in itself. Sid throwing the entire weight of his body into the wall, escaping out of the corner, and now mounting the wall for punches. And that's bad news for Sid. The entire wall just jumped and ran at Sid. And probably going to try to do it again. Sid gets out of the way. And delivers a knee to the rocky face of the wall. Puts the wall in the corner. What can you do here, Sid? The wall puts Sid right back in the corner. Sid now trying to wrench the head off the wall. Sid? Is Sid going to win? Should I have added a fifth one? Sid wants more. driving the head of the wall splashing down sid is making a statement here how long can he go before punch face sets in <laughs> markyard what's up welcome to the chat welcome to the stream welcome to final fantasy pro wrestling the evil wall challenge sid gut wrench suplex takes down the wall the wall does pop right up though throw sid in the corner and it's now delivering a combination of punches. We don't think we see the wall do that too often. There it is. Is it crush phase? Not yet. And this is going to be good news for Sid as the evil wall mistimes its run, but not that time. Five minutes gone. Sid, another suplex on the wall. And goes for the pin. Is it over? Are we seeing history being made right here? Okay, just a hair over two. Sid, German, suplexes the evil wall into the turnbuckle here in the choke of a ring. The entire wall spinning lariat. Are we gonna see an enterprise bomb? Is this gonna end here with a win for Sid? The wall, we have not seen crush raised yet, but I'm getting nervous. Sid does not appear to be anywhere near nervous. Is this Sid's night to make history? Ah, uh, but Crush Face has now begun. Oh, oh no, Sid. Sid, it's Crush Face. Kick out of Crush Face, Sid. 2.9, Sid kicks out. Once Crush Face starts, it does not end. I don't know if you can even afford to rest, Sid. You have to press the attack because it's Crush Face. It's continuing. Crush Face. Crush Face. Is this over for Sid? 2.9, that's two kickouts of Crush Phase for Sid. Crush Phase again, third time. This is the third time, get the three count. 2.9, that's three kickouts. Sid, you need some offense. Here it comes. Sid hits the elbow, slowing down Crush Phase. He's throwing a silk web. I don't think that actually works, does it? Maybe. <laughs> Over the eight minute mark, even if Sid loses now, he has done quite well, but he might win this. We might see the first time the wall ever go down in a 1v1 match. Will we see the Enterprise Bomb? Will we see... Wall's calling for the finish. A rare taunt. The, the, the wall usually saves its taunts for once the match is over. That's an in-the-match taunt saying, this is over. This is the fifth crush phase of my count is right. I do not believe you're kicking out of this one, Sid. He does! Sid, unbelievable, but here it comes again. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop in the ropes. Sid with the Uga crush. Crowd going crazy. Crowd going crazy. This is going to be a pile driver. Another one. Sid trying everything. Go for your finish, Sid. Go for it now. But it's crush phase again. You've got to be in the ropes. The Chocobo sees it. No pin attempt. Sid with the power slam. Shoulder tackles the wall down. Do something, Sid. Go for the pin. Go for the Enterprise Bomb. But it's crush phase. I can't. This has to be it. This sixth one, seventh one. I, Sid, you put up such a great fight, and it's over at 10.59. I don't recall Jan's record-setting run. Because Jan did last longer. That is very impressive by Sid.
That's that's very. That was six crush phases it took. I just don't remember. I mean, that was. I think Yang lasted a long time. I don't ever thought. I I don't think I ever thought that Yang had a chance to actually win. I I literally I I thought. I thought Sid had a chance. I think if, if an Enterprise bomb had come out in that sequence in the middle of the ring, there was there was going to be at the bare minimum a two point nine count and a chance for a win. Yeah, I would agree, Elvin. I think that's I think that's what it came down to. Is Sid did more damage? I think Yang just had the endurance to last a long time. I don't recall him getting that close to actually winning. But let's pay off these predictions. Where's this fall? I don't even remember. Where's this fall with longer than nine minutes? <laughs> Eighty set. Wow. You betters are very, are very intelligent. <laughs> a, a lot of, uh, that's impressive. Most of the bets are longer than nine and they're paying off and an evil wall challenge. Nice job. All right, so what's our official time? 10.59. Let's look at our uh, leaderboard. That does put him in, in, se in second place. He's going to move to the top just below Young, ahead of Edge. <laughs> it's you know Sid. It took a long time for Sid to step in the ring against Evil Wall. Has he just been scouting the whole time? Did he gain extra knowledge? I I, I suppose he. If, if he did, I think the knowledge he gained was offense. Press the attack. Sure, yes, you, you're going to take hits along the way. You're going to take them anyway. Get your hits in. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. If I was in the audience, I, I probably would have bet for the six to nine, just because the evil wall's been so dominant lately. But uh, but you all knew better, and that is true. <laughs> maybe maybe if the commissioner hadn't put Sid in two uh, very, you know, that was a long match he was in the first one. So blame the commish. Maybe Sid would have won, or maybe at, at the very least he would have lasted longer than Yang. But we'll never know. What we do know, however, is what's coming up next. And we have what is hopefully going to be a competitive match with Mindy showing off what she's learned from Rydia. Maybe a handshake to start and a, maybe a hug to finish. I can't predict the future. And we'll see if the next time the tag belts are on the line and what, whatever format we use to determine the number one contender, maybe it'll be Rydia and Mindy uh, involved in that. I do have to double check to make sure uh, that my settings are correct. So give me one moment to set this one up. Think about who you're going to wager on. Yeah, and we'll see, we'll see if, if this helps Mindy ascend to the upper ranks. And uh, I wouldn't put it past her to get a win. Consider that as you... As you think about your wager when that comes up in a moment. Um, I think I'm ready to go. Let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. All right, let's get this one going. After this, we will have a rumble. Get out of here, wager your waves. Give me one moment. Here we go. First of the ring, the former champ. Fan favorite. Voracious, not voracious, that's not the word I want, but a uh, highly skilled competitor. Winner of many big matches. Only lost her title by being knocked out by a devastating cook route finisher by Rupert Conten. And here comes Mindy the joiner. Wait a second. Wait. Who are they? Mindy. Mindy's coming out flanked by two of what I can only imagine are her sisters she's been talking about. What is happening here tonight? This was a... Okay. So it's going to be... They'll be in her corner? I guess. Maybe she... Okay. I assume she's going to show off what she's learned uh, with her sisters. All, wait, all three of them are in the, in the ring. 
All right, let's put up a prediction for this. Let's put up a prediction for this. I see all three of them in the ring at the same time. I don't know if this is going to be good for Rydia. I'll let you predict. I was not expecting this here tonight. So here's your prediction. Who's going to win this one? I, I don't know how to phrase this. It's either going to be Rydia or not Rydia. You tell me what you think. Wager those waves. Mindy, backstage, Mindy and Rydia were laughing together. They were discussing this match. They agreed to it, smiles on their faces. And maybe Mindy had something up her sleeve the entire time. <laughs> A lot of waves being put on Rydia. I do not know the full stipulations of this match, but I do see all three Magus sisters in the ring at the same time. There are allow a lot of waves coming out on <laughs> not Rydia winning this match. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what Mindy... Rydia just has a look of disbelief on her face right now. I guess she's going to square up against Mindy first, and we'll see what happens. So, this match is starting. Fight! Oh. All three Magic Sisters are just there, circling her, taking their... This cannot be good for Rydia. Mindy has this look in her eye. She has this smirk on her face as Sandy, I believe her name is, the tall one in pink, sends Rydia running, drops her down, goes for a pin attempt. Cindy and Mindy, what is happening? The sisters just threw one of them to each other and landed a cutter. Rydia kicks out of a double team attempt. This cannot be good. Rydia distracted. Rydia just does not know what to make of this. Battering Ram. Mindy using her older sister Cindy as a battering ram into Rydia. What? Going for the count. Going for the pin. Just the one count. I don't know what to make of this. And now using her other sister as a battering ram. Is this what they've been practicing? Using each other as battering rams? Is this why Mindy was talking of her sisters this whole time? Now a double team between Sandy and I think Cindy and Blue. Mindy picks Rydia up, runs at her, delivers a running attack. Rydia can match Cindy to the top. Help! Sandy going for the pin. Rydia landing a spinning drop kick. She goes to chop Cindy. Mindy kicks her legs out from under her. Rydia going for a roll up pin, just not, not, not even enough to to count as a pin. Chocobo didn't budge. Rydia landing back-to-back -back maneuvers on the two newest sisters to the Federation, but I, how can she... I think it's going to take three knockouts at this point for Rydia to have any chance at this. I can't imagine another way she gets through this. Yeah. No, because I'm, I'm just getting word from the booth. This has been approved as an elimination match again. Rydia has to eliminate all three sisters if she wants to win this. She can't just pin one. Once again, Cindy flying through the air and grabbing Rydia in a cutter. I, I don't know what Rydia can do. I, I'm hoping that someone in the locker room is watching this happen and can run in and help. Mindy gesturing in Rydia's face. I mean, if Mindy was Mike right now, you would just see, you would just hear kind of a string of disparaging remarks telling Rydia what a fool she was to believe her. Rydia can't respond. What can she do? What can she do? Yeah, someone's got to come out and help her. Cindy to the top. Cindy keeps climbing. Sandy to the top. They have something that's... It's, there's just too many of them for them to land these moves. Just playing with the down Rydia Mindy is at this point. And now this could be it right here. The Tower of Zot. And that is over. No surprise. Mindy completes the destruction of Rydia. We're not giving the Magic Sisters any credit. This is not a fair fight. Three out of one. But 
at the end of it. Mindy does climb Rydia. The Tower of Zot stretch ends it. Rydia, no choice but to tap out. I don't know what to say after that. I don't know where this goes. I Obviously, the partnership, the budding friendship, mentorship between Rydia and Mindy, over. Mindy has uh, not made many friends here tonight, but it looks like she's imported her own. Her sisters, Cindy and Sandy, are now in the mix. We'll see what this means for the future of the FFPW. But let's pay off this prediction. Better beware, I guess, in the FFPW. Not Rydia won that match. I'm pretty confident of that. The winner was not, not Rydia. <laughs> Look, Balthazar, the 16.2 uh, go to Jay Brunter and two others. So three of you bet on not Rydia. Can't say I blame you after seeing how that match unfolded. Whoa. All right. <laughs> I'm a little shaken after that. But we do have one match left. It's always fun to get as many of the FFPW roster involved at once. We have a Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble coming up. I'm not going to tell you who's in it. I'm not going to tell you if you don't know who's in it, you don't know what order they're coming in. You're going to have a choice. You're simply going to bet on the eight slots of the Rumble. In fact, I'm even going to set up the wagering right now. I'll give you a couple minutes to think about it as I set up the match. You're going to bet which slot's going to win, the first one in or the eighth one in or anyone in between. Uh, remember, you know, the, the lower the number, the longer you're in the ring, eight and seven, I would say are typically favored, but we don't know who's coming in in those slots. And there was a betrayal tonight. It was not Kane, and it was not DKC. Here's my eight prediction set up. I would rather not have to retype. All right, give me one moment. Let me set this up. All right, there it is. You've got two minutes to think about this. Again, you don't know who you're betting on. You're betting on the slot. The lower the number, the longer they're in the match. Entry one and two start the rumble, and then every few minutes after that, we have a new entrant. <laughs> I appreciate the first wager. 555 waves on slot five. I can sense a theme there. Some might say the easy money is slot eight, but uh, what if slot eight is Jabberdorf and slot one is Rubicante? Then, then where's the easy money? So I'm going to go set that up. You enjoy your wagering. I'll be back. How's this wagering been going? <laughs> Everyone's staying away from the first four slots. All of the waves are on slots five through eight. 
that kind of makes sense, but I guess there is potential value <laughs> if you wanted to throw a few waves on slots one through four. Got a few moments left before we start this one off and you see who the first two are. All right. All right, let's get this one going. Let me hit start on my end and then I'll switch you over. Accidentally in the Dwarven Ring, and you all know we were not there tonight. We were in the Chocobo Forest here tonight. Let's make sure these settings are all proper. I think we are good. All right, here we go. the jaunty theme of Mysidia, and here comes Porum, first one out. Big sister Palum. I don't think there are any bets on slot one. I'm not sure how you would have felt if you, uh... Wait, the music has not changed! Who set this up? Sister versus brother, the first two outs. Palomon slot two. The Mesidian prodigy himself joining Big Sis in the ring to lead us off here tonight. They both know the maneuver black and white. It'll be interested to see if that gets off before the third one comes in. Palom, a little bit of a taunt there to his sister. All right, here we go. Slots one and two, as far as I know, no one bet on anyone in slots one through four. So just a fun little sibling rivalry to start us off here tonight. Porum getting the best of this, and she tries to charm her brother early. They have practiced magic on each other their entire lives. Palum dodges the charm. We'll see if he tries to set his sister on fire, which is a weird thing to say out loud. He does poke her in the eye, kicks her in the shin, like a little brother might do. Porum redirects him into the corner. I gotta imagine this is a typical Saturday morning when they were growing up in their household. Parents trying to break it up. Hella trying to break it up. But once they leave the room, Forum body slams her brother Palum back down to the mat. Palum whips her over and then just steps on her. I gotta believe he was doing that when he was two and his sister was three. And the third one in, it is JD Jabberdor joining the fray. We've seen a lot of power in the ring tonight. I'm not sure if right now uh, that continues. Form slaps her brother in the face, sends him running. And then snaps JD over and down. <laughs> What's up, Rival? Yeah, this is absolutely re reject percent. At least at the moment, there are five more slots to fill. Alum relentlessly taunting her sister. Her sister, and he, she finally has enough and just levels him with a slap. <laughs> then, oh, pal, that's not nice. A low blow on your sister, and then steps over her stomach again. All right, in the fourth slot. Here comes Clobs, Clobberdor. Commissioner very upset that no one took the bait on any of the four friends. <laughs> First four slots in the betting. <laughs> We've got four people in the ring who all know each other well in the pairs that you traditionally see them in. <laughs> JD and Klob's going at it. <laughs> Porum with the body slam. Double team, Clobber and Porum on Palum. And the dwarves synchronize pickups of the twins. Porum on the run. Misses the drop kick on her brother. Forum, the master, the mistress of body slams tonight. And here comes someone else. 
it is Carrie, one of our newer members of the tag team with her partner EG, a pay girl. Carrie in the ring immediately goes for a weapon. <laughs> this Royal Rumble just got taken up a little notch there with the addition of a barbed wire bat now in the ring. It is currently dropped on the ground. Let's see if anyone goes for it. There is Elvin. Elvin, all of Elvin's waves are tied up right now in Carrie. I'm looking at your wagers now. All right, Raban went for the quote-unquote easy money. Belfazar at slot seven, but next up we're going to see slot six, Commander Leonhardt. Slot six, I'm seeing your comment now, Commander. Shake hands and wait for three. I agree, but as you saw, that did not play out that way. <laughs> they got into it. I guess Ipegro must be next, would be my guess. We'll find out in about 10 seconds. The pattern holds. Here comes, ooh, that's uh, newcomer Sandy Magis. We just saw her as part of Mindy's Betrayal. And that was Palm lifting up his sister in the black and white, their shared maneuver. Palm, the black magic side of it, or of course the white magic side, but it was broken up. Uh, first time we've ever seen the Chocobo go down, I missed it. Did anyone in the audience see who knocked into the Chocobo referee? Chocobo down. Chocobo down. So, oh, Chocobo. There is blood in the feathers on the head of the Chocobo, I believe. <laughs> Sandy. Oh, man. Official DRWF rating with 10. Thank you for rating. Not sure if I know you, but I appreciate the raid. Were you here last time? I apologize if I don't remember. You have caught us for our final match of the night. This is a Royal Rumble featuring eight wrestlers in the Final Fantasy Pro Wrestling Federation. Here comes number six. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> number seven, I believe now at this point. It's Cindy, so if your money is on seven, your money is on Cindy. Thanks again for that raid. And thank you, Antidale, for alerting us that Sandy, big lanky Sandy, was the one who knocked into Chocobo, our Chocobo referee. <laughs> Palum upside down in the tree of woe. Luckily, no one going after him. Cindy's been tossed outside. Everyone's still active. Cindy grabs a sledgehammer and breaks into the ring. Chocobo hates that and is counting out. Cindy going after her sister. This is Cindy's first night in the FFPW as well, so she's looking to make a mark. We are 30 seconds from finding out who our final wrestler is. Whoever put their waves on number eight, you're about to find out. And here is our final entrant. It is Mindy herself, the architect of the betrayal tonight, trying to put her stamp on the FFPW, not with the help of Lydia. We hear laughter. <laughs> we see Clobberdorf being indoctrinated into the ways of the Magic Sisters, sharing one of their double team maneuvers. And we have all eight. These are the only wrestlers that will be in the ring tonight. One of these will walk out the winner. And JDN Forum wisely, the stacked up suplex on Mindy, wisely going after the last one in. Uh, we just saw fire come out. That hit someone. High kick by Carrie to the back of Mindy. Mindy just shakes it off. Slobberdorf just got hit by something big, and then Cindy landed. Takes down Clob again. Cindy going after Clobberdorf. Clobberdorf getting clobbered in the clobs. Low blow by Carrie. Horn trips down four clobs. Strong body slam, sister to sister. That was the Mycidian chop, however, on Cindy. Sandy opportunistically covering sister Cindy. <laughs> Mindy. Mindy is getting her way tonight, that's for sure, about the door. Carrie is exalted. What has happened to Carrie? Carrie is gassed. Carrie now getting double team power bomb. Yeah! Mindy trying to break the arm 
of the clobber door. Clobbering is all he knows how to do. Don't take that away from him. Talon's on the outside. No one is following him. Nice reversal and take down by carry over Sandy. Going for the pin. Is this it? Meanwhile, you see JD is in a power bomb by Cindy. Luckily for JD, enough time passed before that, uh, before the Chocobo could get over and make the count. Impressive power bomb by Cindy on JD. And oh, the dwarves betraying each other as Cindy big frog splash. Palom, often seen as a youth, frog splashing into the city and water. Frog splashes JD. Now posing in front of JD, Hallam not going for any sort of follow-up and instead takes the cutter from Sandy. Clobs. Clobs breaks up a, a big move that Carrie was planning and Carrie just kind of took it in stride and just kind of laughed in the mic there for that. Hallam walks over the body of JD. All 82 pounds. And we just had Horam deliver her finisher, the BWM, to JD. This could be it. This could be our first elimination. I think it's going to be. It is Horam with the first elimination tonight. JD is out. Luckily, none of you bet on JD. That's the why you would. I guess it would have been random in this case. But uh, JD's out. You can see the difference in the twins there. Horam hits her finisher, gets the cover, gets the elimination. Palom lands the Legion. Starts flexing his non muscles. Great high kick. Good sequence there by Carrie. High kick on Cindy. Neck breaker on Horam. Cindy just powerbombed her sister. Has her in the pin. Not sure how Mindy's going to feel about that. Carrie laughing again. And the twins are playing rock, paper, scissors. Uh, twins, there is a match going on, but apparently Palom won rock, paper, scissors with this the unauthorized work on uh, Cindy showing off her strength. Clobberdorf being suspended in the air. Harry getting a 2.9 near fall on Sandy. And Clobber is clobbering. Not his finisher, but a nice punch combination there delivered to it. Super kick delivered from the tall Sandy to the face of Carry. Form is not breaking it up, but it's just a 2.9. Meanwhile, Alum is in trouble. That is Cindy's finisher, Sin Delicious. And unfortunately for her, fortunately for Palom, Clobber breaks up the follow-up. Will she go for it again? Instead, it's Palom with the black and white, his specialty on Cindy. That could be a match-turning moment. Devastating pile driver finisher by Cindy, but she cannot follow up. Instead, she just runs full force into Palom. They both go down. Palom gets up right away. And a little bit of odd teamwork there between Cindy and Horn. I just saw Palom change his mind about something. You can see that too. Yeah. He's gonna run and said he city and chops his sister. Speaking of sister, Sandy takes down hers, Cindy, while Mindy is hung up in the corner. DDT delivered by Sandy to Cindy. Yeah. Mindy's doing the move that we saw her do repeatedly to Rydia in that unfair match we saw just a few moments ago where she picks you up and then runs full force into you as you're on the ground. And speaking of being run full force into, she takes it from Carrie. The two older Magic sisters were just down both at the same time at the top of the ring, but they're both back up. Mandy is feeling pumped up. Low blow, low blow from Carrie to Mindy, which is her getting her own medicine there. But you might have just missed it. Form did land her second finisher of the night, this time on Carrie Palom. Let's it happen. Form, two eliminations tonight, both on the heels of her finisher, the BWM. 
Could this be Forum's night? She came in first. No one bet on number one. She was just about to hit her brother with her finisher, the BWN. Talon's got clobber up in the black and white. All three Magic Sisters still alive in this match. Both of the twins still alive. And then who else do we have? Probably. Will this be the Magic Sisters night for the final three? Be the three sisters? Or will Palo and Forum last? Will the twin magic there deliver? This could be bad news for Palo, but he reverses out of whatever Cindy was planning. That could have been her finisher again. And this gamefully walks over her body. And I believe that was just an elimination. We heard the screen. We saw her climb. Tower of Zada, I believe, just eliminated Clobberdorf, and yes, he is making his way out of the ring and up the ramp back to the locker room. Hit the showers, Clobberdorf. Mindy with the elimination. Sandy missing the top rope maneuver, and Mindy saying, Sandy, if you can't hang, I'm going to pin you. 2.9. I must have missed that one, Belfazar. Palm on the ground, barking like a dog, trying to intimidate the four ladies he's up against. And Sin Delicious on her own sister. Mindy, this could be it for Mindy. She came in last and she has been eliminated. Is Mindy gonna regret that? This is a Palom's finisher now. A little bit of Miss and mischief. Palom, will he go for the pin? He does. Palom following up. Sandy's been eliminated. It is down to the twins who entered one and two along with Cindy Magus. <laughs> Amazing. And yep, if you wagered on slot eight, you were out of luck. Sin Delicious stole your synth waves. Palm, that is a strong looking Magus sister. Do not keep directing her to your chin. However, oh, he's lured her into a game of rock, paper, scissors. Did he win? It looks like he did. This is... Palm is exhausted, but not too exhausted to pose while his sister is getting assaulted. Now he goes after his sister. His sister says, get off my back. We have a shared enemy here. And she... Poor him. Yeah, sure, she stomped on her brother, but she also pulled him out of the way of Cindy jumping on him. This has been a brawl all about siblings here tonight. That is a big maneuver landed on Forum. But it looks like the black and white Forum breaks it up. Maybe Forum's had enough at this point. Forum on the run. Cindy dizzy. Forum just runs into the back of her, maybe distracted by her brother on the ground. Because <laughs> Cindy was about to hit her finisher one more time, but Forum broke it up. That was scary, but look at the strength of Cindy Porm not saving her brother this time. Cindy in the corner, brother and sister slapped, makes him dizzy, running drop kick. Maybe now she can finish off. Cindy, nope, not gonna happen, not at least right now. But Fire 2 comes out. Palom casts Fire 2, avoiding his sister, hitting Cindy. Porn taking it all in, but bad, bad choice there for him. Normally, Palm gets burned by the taunts. Porn shouldered down by Cindy. I almost want to say that the twins are going a little easy on each other right now. They're saving the big moves for Cindy, but we'll see if that holds up. Everyone's pretty exhausted at this point. <laughs> I don't think we see Porn exhausted that often. She's been uh, punched over quite a few times. This looks like the black and white. There it is, specialty move. And yeah, you can see Palm just kind of getting Forum out of the way. But maybe that was a bad idea because up he goes, down he goes. Slam down to the mat by Cindy. Another black and white, Forum says, not this one. Nice combination. Leg sweeps her brother down, stomps on him. 
picks him back up. And now the double team. Oh, I thought we were going to see Twin Magic a late. You don't normally cast Flare this late into a seed. I mean, match. I thought we were going to see it, but Cindy avoided it. But not this time. This is Twin Magic. It is a Flare 36 minutes in. Reversal. The pin attempt. Is Cindy going to try to break this up? She does not. Porm has eliminated her brother. Porm was entered in number one. It is now. And now she's landing her finisher. BWM hit on Cindy. Going for the pin. Going for the win. The match of her life. It's over. Porm, our champion tonight, entered first. No bets on her. All of your waves are gone. That's at least four eliminations. If you're watching right now, you were here the night. Porum dominated. Porum dominated from start to finish. Get those Porum emotes out. <laughs> I believe Antidale's right. Porum went right into Baron, looted the pot, heroin robe. T Pro somehow. Is that possible? I don't know. <laughs> BWM, in case you didn't know, her finisher BWM stands for Best White Mage. Is there any doubt anymore? Did she prove it here tonight? <laughs> that was awesome. Forum. I might have to watch that. <laughs> We're going to pay off entry one. Here we go, entry one. Zero waves bet. What happens when you click on it? Because when we click when someone wins, it tells you, you know, this amount of waves won by this person. I wanted to say everyone got it wrong. That was great. I got no water left. I need more water. Luckily for me, that is the end of our night. That was a lot of fun. Let's review. We saw the elements in a pretty interesting comeback. You may want to go back and watch the VOD, but it was a four versus four elimination match. Uh, a good match there. We saw Yang and Balnob. We saw Balnob take down Yang and continue his unbeaten streak here in the FFPW. We saw the Evil Wall Challenge. Sid posting the second best time ever. Uh, almost 11 minutes. And everyone who bet the, the nine minutes and over won that one. Really impressive. And I think even definitely the, the closest anyone is ever coming to beaten. Uh, beating the Evil Wall in the challenge. I, I would say even including Yang, it's been a while since I've seen that match. Uh, Yang endured, but I don't think he got near the offense that Sid got here tonight. And then you can see the card. This was planned as a friendly match between two competitors who have had growing admiration for one another, perhaps Rydia seeing herself as a mentor to Mindy Magis. But we saw the betrayal occur tonight. It's right there above my head. Yeah, when betrayals up on the screen, and Kane is, is on the card. You can get hoodwinked, but you saw what happened. Mindy had been talking about her sisters, and tonight they appeared big time. And the only thing that could slow down the Magic Sisters, it appears, is Porum, the BWM. So thank you so much for coming out here tonight. Thanks for that raid earlier. Appreciate all the interest, all the betting, all the excitement here tonight. Yeah, thanks for that raid. Official DRWF. That sounds like a wrestling federation. I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, if you're new to the stream, I am Korgs, sometimes known as Micro Korgs, Korgs for short. Follow me if you'd like to see more Final Fantasy Pro Wrestling. I've been doing one or two a week, uh, mainly Tuesdays and Fridays, uh, around between 7.30 and 8.30 Eastern. Uh, that is the plan. The plan is to do another show Friday night. And uh, we'll see if we can do that. So, again, thank you so much, everyone, who hung out here tonight. I had a blast doing this. And I'm going to send you off on a raid, I believe, if I can. Let's see if I can raid you somewhere. Who can I raid you to? Let's see. I'm going to raid you. So, a lot of, uh, in, in case you're only here for wrestling, the other thing I stream, the other community I'm involved in is the Free Enterprise Randomizer. It's Final Fantasy IV, hence all the characters that you saw wrestling tonight from the game Final Fantasy IV. Um, so I'm going to send you over to someone named Tall Grant in the community. Tall Grant is doing uh, practice for the upcoming tournament in the Randomizer community. So let's go say hi to Tall Grant as he runs Blue Moon Practice. I believe it is uh, no async or anything if you're in the FE community. 
So no, no danger of getting spoiled. I think Paul Grant's just playing for himself, trying to get better as we all do. I mean, I agree, Castro. Castro's listening with, without uh, audio. So thank you, Castro. Do you read lips? I don't know. Watch the VOD. You'll hear me saying thank you. Uh, so yep, everyone have a great night. Let's go say hi to the tallest of the Grants, Paul Grant. See you next time.